In this video, I'm going to go through constructing the x basis state. So spin up and spin down in the x direction rather than the z direction, but we're still going to be expressing it in the basis vectors of spin up and spin down in z. So where the book starts from in this case and where we're going to start from is an experimental measurement. Right? We're still starting with quantum mechanics, and the idea here is that we can do the experiment, we can make the measurement, and we can see that if we start with our state, our initial state being spin up in z, and we then make a measurement in x and ask what is the probability that we measure spin up in x, we in fact see that it's one half. Now we then want to actually write this in our bracket notation, and in this case, we have our measurement on the left, which is going to be spin up in x, and we have our input state, our initial state on the, on the right, our cat state, and that's spin up. So notice that this x means in the x direction, and when it's the z direction, and that's the basis we're working in, that's our normal state, we don't need to actually write anything there. Now we can then go through and repeat this experiment. So we can repeat it for measuring spin down in the x direction when we started with the z direction being spin up. And again, when we calculate that out, this is how we would calculate that probability, we also see that that is one half. Well, so now let's repeat this for spin up in the x direction when our initial measurement, our initial state, was spin down in z. That is also going to be one half. And again, these would be experimental measurements. That's where I'm pulling this from. We don't yet know why this would happen. So the fourth one is then going to be spin down in the x direction based on our initial state being spin down in the z direction. Also one half. So this is a, a pattern that we're going to see when we're comparing x and y, y and z, x and z in this case, is that it's one half, one half, one half, one half. Now, you might just guess what the coefficients are, but we're going to go through this in a very specific way. And the reason is, is that when if, if you just think that you can take certain shortcuts and you then apply it to the y basis as well, it wouldn't work. So, when we're calculating this out, we are just using this experimental data to do this, and this is our starting point. So what we need to do is express our, our spin, uh, our measurements in the x direction as um, states expressed in the z basis. And we're going to write these as ket states. So what that means is when we say spin up in the x direction, we are going to write this as a sum of our basis vectors with complex coefficients. Now our basis vectors in this vector space is going to be our, our z, spin up and spin down uh, vectors. And remember that your coefficients need to be complex. So I'm just going to write this as uh, general a, spin up, and b, spin down. And then we have our spin down in the x direction, c, spin up, and d, spin down. So these are our basis vectors, and the idea is that our, our vector space can be spanned by these. So any spin direction, this is a spin one-half system, can be expressed this way as long as we find the right coefficients, any state. And these are special states in that they would be measured as spin up and spin down in this x direction. So how do we go about approaching this? Well, we now use these facts to constrain things. We are also going to use the fact that this must be normalized to further constrain it. So let's start um, by using, and we don't have enough time in this video to go through the whole thing, but so let's just start with this, this first bit. So when I write my bra state that corresponds to this, I need to complex conjugate my coefficients and then convert these kets to bras as well. So I have A star and I have B star. So now when I go through and calculate this probability, I have that one half equals, and I'll do my curly braces, so A star plus plus B star minus, and so that's just re-expressing 
my uh, spin up in the x direction bra in its terms of basis vectors and these unknown coefficients, and then spin up. And then that's squared. So when we multiply this out, we would have two terms. And when we do that term out, that's going to equal 0, because a minus with a plus gives us 0. They're orthogonal. And a plus with a plus is going to equal 1. So what this gives us is, in fact, magnitude of a star squared. So again, this term dropped out. So now what is the magnitude of a star squared? Well, so remember that if I have the magnitude of some complex number k, that that's going to be k star with k. So the fact that this is a star is now actually going to be like a star star, which in fact gives you back a and then a star. So I don't have to actually write it uh, that way. So we then see that this has to equal 1 half. So uh, I'll stop here for this video, but we can go through and we get the constraints for b. Um, we similarly see that b b star also equals 1 half. And then we can talk about this in terms of a complex phase, and I'll go through this argument in a separate video. So this derivation is in fact following what's on the book um, on page starting 17, and so in the next video I'll kind of look at the very end of that derivation.